Hello friends and welcome to Edupedia World Videos. This is the part B of the chapter 6 of the course Basics of Programming in C Language and we are studying C variables. In this part we shall study about the scope of the variables and the data types. So the scope of C variables is of following three types. It can be classified into three types. So one is the global scope the other one is the block scope okay so global this is the variable which is declared at the beginning of the program and therefore its scope will remain throughout that particular file of a c program okay as the name suggests that it can be globally accessed within a particular file and this kind of variable is declared at the beginning of the program it should be declared just before the main program means before the functions of your program before the first function of your program this variable should be declared then there is the block scope that means that in case you have declared any variable within a particular block the scope of that variable remains limited to that particular block so you can access that variable within that block if you try to save a value to that variable or print that variable outside of that block it will cause an error okay so the scope is limited to that particular block your variable will come into scope when the code enters that particular block and executes the declaration statement and your variable will be deleted from the memory and memory location given to it will be deallocated once your control reaches outside that particular block okay so two more ways to define the scope of variables in C are there one is the extern now extern is also used with the global variables but the important thing is that you can extern the variables which are declared as globals in some other C file so the variable is declared in some other C file and you can use it in some other C file using the extern statement so in the beginning of your file where you declare your variables you have to specify extern int x suppose your x is the variable of the data type integer which is declared in some other file as int x so you can use the statement extern int x which will ask the compiler to look for the actual declaration of that variable somewhere else in some other c file and then you can also use it in your current c file so apart from extern there is a static scope which is also available what is a static variable? This is the variable that retains its value even after it has got out of the scope for some time during the execution of a program. Suppose you have the static variable declared within a particular block. Okay. Now as we have studied that in the block scope, a variable will remain in the scope only when you are in a particular block of execution of your program and it will be forgotten by the compiler once you exit that block. But if you declare that variable as static variable, it will not be forgotten, but the value whichever it has attained at the end of that block will be retained. And whenever you again enter while execution in that block, the variable, that particular variable will have the same value which it had during the last time it was accessed. So this is known as a static scope and you can declare your variables as static the important thing is that the statement of declaration of a static variable is executed only once so if the static variable is static int x now to declare any variable as static variable you have to precede it by the extern uh, sorry a static keyword so static int x will means that the x is a static variable so this statement static int x is equal to 0 if you have declared a variable like this this statement will be executed only the first time your control reaches there suppose you have a function in which you have declared static int x now first time the control reaches this function this statement will be executed second time this will not be executed because the variable is already declared and it is known by the compiler to be a static variable okay so compiler will retain its actual value what Ever it has attained till now it will not again declare the variable and again reset its value to zero 
Okay, so we will study these topics in detail in later chapters, and these are very very important topics for any C programmer to implement the designs in C language and moreover for cracking interview questions also these are very important topics we will take this up in detail in later chapters okay now data types in C so these are the few data types which are mentioned over here one is the integer types floating types void user defined types which are of enumerations and type def then there are derived types which are like arrays pointers union structures and function pointers types okay now we will discuss them in a little bit more detail. First is the integer types. Now the first integer type is char. Okay, although char is used to store characters, which means A, B, C alphabets, which can be strings, which can form the strings, yet it is an integer type. Why? Because internally C stores the characters also as integers. Okay, so they are actually stored as their ASCII codes, A-S-C-I-I, American Standard Codes for Information Interchange. And these codes range from the value of minus 128 to 127. So it is one byte in length, which means two raised to the power of eight, which is 256. So value of CAR can range from minus 128 to 127, including zero. Or if you declared CAR as unsigned CAR, then its value would be from 0 to 255. These are also 256 values. Okay, signed CAR we have already discussed. Then there is INT, which is integer. It can be 2 or 4 bytes. Now, depending on which kind of compiler you are using, we will be using a GNU compiler, which will execute on Windows. So, on Linux, any compiler and GNU compilers, when you use them on Windows, will take int as 4 bytes by default okay but if you use some of the conventional or the older windows compilers like turbo c etc they will take integer as 2 bytes in length and the range of integer is from minus 32768 to 32767 in case it is 2 byte in length and get it is 4 bytes in length then its range is this as specified over here okay now, by default, if you do not precede a data type by any signed or unsigned keyword, it is always taken as to be signed. So, this range will follow. In case you have defined it as unsigned int, then its range would be begin from 0 and it would be from 0 to this value. Then, short. So, short is in case in your GNU or Linux kind of compilers where int is 4 bytes and you want to store some value which will you know will never go beyond a particular range which will never reach this range so why waste the additional 2 bytes so there you can declare your variable as short it can store integer values up to this range minus 32768 to plus 32767 similarly unsigned short would be from 0 to 65535 Okay, now long. Now this long concept was actually developed when the traditional Windows compilers used to run, which used to take integer as two bytes. That time they don't used to have short as a data type, but they used to have long as a data type for storing a longer value, and its range is actually equal to integer only. Okay. Apart from these data types, now these data types as we have realized they do not store the floating point values. They store only integer values or characters which are encoded into ASCII codes. We, for storing decimal values or non-integer values, we have the floating types which are float which has a range of 4 bytes. Okay, And it can store up to a precision of 6 decimal places. Then we have double which has size of 8 bytes. And this is the range of double and 15 decimal places. Then we have long double, which is, has a size of 10 bytes. So this is the largest data type in C language with the size of 10 bytes. And it can store a precision of up to 19 decimal places. Okay. So apart from all these data types, we have a void type also. The void type indicates that the variable or the data has no type. Okay. Now, why will a situation occur when the data has no type? This we will come to know when we study C programming in detail. 
for now just remember that void type can be used with functions which return no value so in case you want to make a function that returns no value you have to precede it with the data type of void okay this is one use of void and later on you can study numerous uses of voids void data type we will learn about numerous uses of the data types of C language as we proceed for, uh, further with our language of C programming in this tutorial. Okay, so now we come to some of the user defined data types. Okay, so user data defined data types are like typedef. Now, typedef allows you to assign any alias or any nickname to any data type in C language. Okay, this can be very useful. Because suppose you want to make your program compiler independent, okay? In Windows, as we have discussed in the traditional compilers, the int was two bytes, but in Linux it was four bytes. Now what you can do is you can just in a header file make a type def and make it like int 32, okay? And assign it an alias int 32 type def int 32 int so this will make the alias of int 32 to int so now whenever you have to change port your code from windows to linux you just have to change the, in this file you just have to change that int 32 means long not int so that way you can use the type defs okay then you have enumerations enumerations allow you to create new data types which can have any value from a defined set of words okay these can be english like words which can be assigned a numeric value so what happens is that enumerations is just like that you are using some english language words which can internally be assigned some integer values so for the compiler those words would mean some numbers 1 2 3 or 4 but for the user it is easier to remember them as a word like for example for the days of a week okay user will find it more comfortable to remember them as monday tuesday wednesday thursday and so on but the compiler would internally find it more comfortable to understand it as 0 1 2 because digits everything ultimately is stored in form of digits only inside the compiler's memory so that is why we use enumerations okay whenever you have a defined set of words you should try and use enumerations for them this will improve the readability of your code and this will also make coding easier okay so thank you for watching the video and uh, i hope you continue with the course basics of programming in c language have a nice day